we go. So welcome everyone to today's forum discussion. We're going to be talking about dealing with complaints about the integrity of published research. Now, COPE over the years has developed um, quite a few guidelines on various aspects of this already, and I've listed some of those guidelines here. But what we are trying to do now is to bring all of these guidelines to, together and, and create some overarching principles that encompass our existing guidelines, but also address some of the new issues that have come up around dealing with complaints about integrity of, of the published record. So what are the new issues? Well, you'll, you'll notice that we've changed the terminology of our guidance. So we've stopped using the term whistleblower and we now refer to people who raise complaints. And this is just to make um, the, the guidance uh, more widely um, accessible and understandable. But I'm sure everybody in the audience has, has, um, has experience of receiving complaints and has noticed that complaints are not just increasing, but they are coming to journals and publishers via different routes, particularly publicly via social media and platforms like PubPeer. And in addition to that, or perhaps because of that, the complaints are also becoming more complicated. So for example, the same complaint may be made via different routes or repeated complaints may be made to a journal from one individual, or issues may be raised that affect multiple journals. So I hope the audience, um, most of the audience has had an opportunity to read our new draft guidance, but in case you haven't, I'm showing a screenshot of part of that guidance. And don't worry, I'm not gonna read through all of this, but I will highlight some of the important points that the new guidance makes. So the first three points about considering all requests or complaints, acknowledging their receipt and responding in a, in a neutral and fact-based manner are our standard code guidance for, for, for all kinds of um, issues. If you do that, there is no need to repeatedly engage with the complainant um, and become involved in an extensive back and forth with them. If the complainant behaves in a harassing, offensive, threatening or defamatory manner, you should seek advice from legal counsel or other relevant authorities. But it's OK under these circumstances to tell the complainant that you won't investigate while this behaviour continues. If you investigate a complaint and find that it has substance, then the next thing to do is to follow the appropriate COPE guideline if it's available. Remember to respect the correspondent or complainant's right to anonymity and complaints raised anonymously should be managed in the same way as ones that are raised um, not anonymously um, as far as possible. And be careful not to inadvertently um, divulge an anonymous complainant's identity. If somebody has raised a serious concern and helped you um, identify problems and resolve them, then consider thanking them um, on the appropriate, in an appropriate manner. And occasionally you conduct an investigation and you let the complainant know the outcome and your intended action, and the complainant remains unhappy and, and wants you to change your outcome. And under these circumstances, if you followed the correct process and are confident that you are doing the right thing, then it's fine to tell the complainant that you consider the matter closed and you won't respond any further. And COPE doesn't respond um, if it is copied in on complaints from complainants to journals and publishers. And the other two key points in the document are that the guidance recommends that journals should be contacted directly with any complaint. And this is to make sure that the right people are involved in managing that complaint. But also that journals should have policies in place regarding how and whether they will respond to issues that are not raised to them directly. So that is the situation with the current draft. We want to make it as comprehensive and as useful as possible. And so here are the questions we have um, for the forum. Are there any aspects of the guidance in the discussion document you feel need clarification or change? Are there any aspects of complaints handling which you feel are not adequately covered in the document? Are there any tools or resources that you would like to see around this issue? What policies do journals have on responding to complaints that are not made directly to them? For example, if they're raised on social media or platforms like PubPeer. 
and do complaints that are raised by different channels present different challenges for you. So I'm going to stop talking here and open this up for discussion.